Lisa Fiesick here. And in this podcast episode, I want to talk about a script, a sales script, a video script, your content, course creation scripts. Do you just wing it or do you go buy a script is the never ending question. And I'm going to tell you my take on it, the do's and don'ts, the pros and cons of it, and why I think it's necessary that we meet somewhere in the middle. So I don't think we should be winging it. And I also don't think we should be so tied and stuck to our script that we can't be ourselves and we can't talk about things that come up if something of value happens to come to you when you're doing your thing that you don't feel like you can put it in there and you can say it. You've got to have that flexibility because people know when something is pre-scripted because it lacks the personality. It lacks you. And that's not what makes people know, like, and trust you and want to buy from you. So as a content expert, I believe that that happy medium is somewhere in the middle. But how do we get there? It does start with a script. And I can remember three years ago when I was first learning about funnels and email automation and just getting going with my online business in health and fitness at the time. And I wasn't afraid to go on video, having taught group fitness classes, being a personal trainer, being in front of people. I wasn't afraid of that, but I was afraid that I was going to forget what I wanted to say next. And the mentor that I was studying under, we were at a retreat and there were probably about 20 of us and we got to write our scripts and we got to rehearse them. And then what they did is they teleprompted it. So they had a live videographer there. They had the iPad with a teleprompter app on it. And the very first time I ever had to do video, I had to read from a teleprompter. And let me tell you, when I got back home, because this was in California, I'm here in Canada, and the videos were sent to me, my first thought was, oh my God, I can't use it. And that was an entire day at this retreat. That was all that we did was shot our sales videos and our thank you videos. And I looked at both those videos and I was just like, no, I can't. And I can remember when I was delivering it, I can remember feeling anxious and nervous because I was trying to be me and trying to be authentic and trying to read and keep up with that teleprompter. And I was trying to give it my best personality. And there were things that I wanted to say outside of the teleprompter. But if I added a word or two, then it got me off the timing. And it was just, it was a mess. And when you look at the video, it didn't look like a mess. The average user that saw it, I could have used it. I could have thrown it into my sequences. But deep down inside, I knew that it wasn't my best. Now, it was better than winging it. But I knew that. It just, it didn't accurately depict me and my personality and just the way that I say things. And when we're talking about the ABCs of whether you should use a script or not, the first one is A, authenticity. When you're talking to people, whether you're pitching something, you're teaching something, somebody's watching something on social media with you, you have to be yourself. So it's great when you write a script or it's great when you hire a copywriter and they write it for you. I write a lot of things for my clients, but I always tell them you have to change it. If that's not the way you would say it, if that's not a word or a phrase that you would use, and if that's not the way that you can see yourself delivering it in a conversational way, if that's not the way that you talk to your friends and your family, or if your life is on the line and you're really trying to nail that point home and be serious about something, then that's the way that you have to talk to people. That's the way you have to present it. No different than when you're on video. So authenticity is huge. People, they see when you're not you, when you're trying to be somebody you are not, 
and they see when you're nervous, when you're trying to say, keep up with the teleprompter or keep up with something. Sometimes people can't always, they might not know that you're teleprompting it and they might not be able to put their finger on it, but they're going to go, mm, there's just something about this chick I don't like or this dude that I don't like, and I'm just, I'm tuning out. I'm going somewhere else. And the same thing happens with your voice. I've been studying a lot under Roger Love lately, and what I've been learning is that when your voice doesn't match what you look like, AKA like Mike Tyson with his high-pitched voice, but his buff body, it doesn't match. And again, the person goes, oh, I don't know about that. I don't think I want to, I don't want to engage with that person. I don't want to give them my time, my energy, or more importantly, my money, my business owners. That's not what we want. So the, your delivery is just as important as the words that you're saying. So that authenticity piece has to show up in both. It has to be written and sound like you, and it has to be delivered like you. Now, I think you have to start with a script so that you know what you're saying. But then when it comes to the delivery, you have to have that flexibility to ad lib and say things a different way and practice it. And you do have to have that little bit of winging it there because we know with teaching psychology or sales psychology, there are specific frameworks that you should be following in the order of how you say things. And that's where if you work with me one-to-one -one, or you do some of our group coaching work with my husband and I, we clue you into those frameworks and tell you exactly what it is and what steps you need to say it in. So that's also in my online and nine course, that do-it-yourself course you can find at lisapizik.com. But that's the A, authenticity. The B is you have to be prepared, meaning that the day that you go and you shoot, you shoot those videos, sales video, course video, whatever video you're shooting, you have to practice your stories, your teaching. You've got to practice to see how it all fits. So again, I like to think of your script as building blocks or puzzle pieces. And you've got a few stories that you've practiced and you've scripted. And you've got a few teachings that you know when you're trying to teach somebody something, these are the three steps for this, or these are the five steps for this, or these are the four parts of this, that when it comes time to deliver, whether it's a speech or a video or whatever it is, that you're creating that script and you're pulling from multiple pieces of things. But the only way you can do that is if you're prepared and you practice and you know those stories and those teachings, just like brushing your teeth, where it's on that autonomic loop where you don't even have to think about it, right? Where you, what is it, unconsciously, consciously do something, right? Where you just, you've done it so many times, you've said it so many times that you're prepared, you're ready to go, you're not nervous, you're not afraid that you're going to forget that next part of the story because you know in your brain the bullet points of that story. You're not gonna forget that teaching piece because you know those bullet points of that teaching piece because you've practiced it over and over and over again. So even if you decide that you wanna write a script and you wanna teleprompt it, you still got to make sure that you know that script and you're prepared because if you have a temporary brain fart and you get behind in that script, it's not going to come across like you. And that's what happened to me is that I don't speak in teleprompted script. That's just not natural or normal for me. And I started adding in some lines and some words and some phrases or it's interesting because you have to, if you've never worked with a teleprompter, you have to set the speed. And we know that we don't speak in a steady pace. Good speakers, they speed it up when they want to get you excited and they want to tell you about something, or they slow it down when they really want you to listen and they want you to feel something and they want you to get it. So good speakers speak in different paces and tones and pitches and melodies. And when it's teleprompted, 
I found it was either way too slow for me or it was way too fast. And it just didn't come across authentically like me. So the B is be prepared. And then the C, the C are those components, meaning you have to know what order you're saying stuff in. Now, I can somewhat go and wing it because I've shot a bajillion sales videos, live videos, these podcast videos, YouTube videos. I shoot videos almost daily. So I have a good general understanding of where I want to go and how deep I want to go with people and what those components are. But I will tell you just general frame. You always have to start with who you are, what you do and how you help people. Then you got to go right into your story. Everything has to have a story next because story is what gets people very quickly to learn about you, learn about your character and know, like, and trust you. Then you always have to have some sort of framework for teaching. Then you have to always overcome objections because people are going to go, yeah, yeah, that's lovely. That's your story. You're this, you're that. You're telling me to do X, Y, and Z. That's not going to work for me. And people will self-sabotage. That's just naturally what we do as humans. We make up every excuse why something won't work because we're afraid to do something. So you got to be one step ahead of the game and overcome those objections. Then you got to tell them first thing they need to do and then you got to leave them with a call to action. And that's kind of your general components that you want in every video, even blog post, every blog post, every teaching, all of that. You kind of got to follow that system. Now, I know on my website, I've got the 15 P's to convert the leads where we're talking about positioning and pricing and product and premium and parade of services, um, prime bonuses. So there's an exact P that I take you through, 15 P's that stack an offer or stack a sale, again, through that sales psychology so that people are led more to know, like, trust, and buy from you because you're presenting yourself in the best way possible. You're positioning yourself in the best way way possible. But when I talk about those 15 P's, yeah, that's a script. But again, you also have to have the flexibility to go different places, especially if you're doing it live and you're allowing people to ask questions. You want to be able to adapt to the audience or adapt to the environment or adapt it to whoever or wherever you're talking. So you got to find that happy medium in the middle, but everything starts with those components. And you gotta have story framework, first thing, objections, call to action. Those are those pieces that I want you to deliver in every single piece of stuff that you put out there. So yes, a script is necessary, but no, it's not fixed, meaning you don't have to follow it word for word for word for word, and you'll get better. So many times we think we're going to break the internet if we put up one bad video or technology crashes, or you're just not feeling it that day, but you have to talk on that podcast or do that live video or teach or shoot that welcome video or shoot that sales video. Not every day is going to be perfect, but the most beautiful piece of online is that you can change it the next day. And usually nobody remembers. We think that people, everyone's opening our email and watching our videos and listening to our podcast and tuning into our lives. And they're not, people are busy. And even if they do tune in and think, well, that kind of sucked. That's not normally what Lisa sounds like, or that's not normally that. They're going to forget about it. They're going to be called on to the next thing. And when you put your next video out and it's amazing, that's all they're going to remember. So we give people, we give our listeners and our audience and our ideal clients way too much credit that we think that we have to get it right and get it perfect every single time. You don't. My website is on its fourth revision. Some of my courses are in version two. I was just at Experts Academy with Brendan Burchard and he was sharing a framework about how your content 
has to have the four R's. You've got to have role model stuff. You've got to be a researcher and share some of the latest research about whatever point you're trying to hit home. You have to be a recorder, meaning you're pulling facts and data and scientific stuff that you're sharing. That, that's good content. And lastly, a recommender. So if there's a, a, a product or a service or a, you know, a book or person or something that is going to help them deepen their learning with the point that you're trying to make, then you got to do that as well. And he's saying the more R's you have, that's award winning content. So I'm going back and redoing videos to add those four R's in it. You can always make it better. He talks about in your welcome video, you got to show care and concern for people. And when you say, I really want you to get this, just that simple line can connect people with you more and they trust you more because you mean it. Right? We don't think to say that, but that simple line of saying, it's just, I really want you to get this. I really want you to understand this. So here's the things you got to go do. So I'm always learning how to make my content and my scripts better and going back and reshooting things. So I don't want that perfectionism to get in the way of you even trying or putting anything out there. I don't want you to put that pressure on yourself that you've got to get it right on the first try. And you know what? If you, I've had those days where everything I put out is crap. You know, I put out two or three videos and again, to the end user, they probably don't think, or maybe they do think it's crap. Who knows, right? There's going to be people that love you and people that hate you, but you know, internally, it's not your best work. I just, I just pack it in, right? If I'm having one of those days and I'm just like, oh my gosh, everything is crappy. I pack it in. Like, I wanted to do this podcast video yesterday, but the day was just crazy. And then last night, our almost five-year-old was running a fever and then he was having night terrors. He was thinking that spiders were crawling on him and poor guy. And he was in and out of our bed several times and we were up giving him, you know, Tylenol to, to try to break his fever. And I didn't even know if I was going to shoot videos today because I'm not feeling my best. But Again, you got to find that happy medium of you can't procrastinate it forever and you can't put it off forever. And this is just one of many podcasts. And you got to think of your content in the same way. It's just one of many videos because you're always going to go back and do what you know how to do. I love podcasting. I love going live. I love teaching. I love, actually, I'm a nerd and I love shooting sales videos. I think it's fun shooting those because you're offering your best self to people and saying, here I am, I can help you. And the right person will take you up on the offer. So uh, this is something that I'll do for the rest of my life. And when you're in it for the long haul and you think about it that way, ain't no thing if you have one or two bad days off because you've got however many bajillion days left, God willing, up above, that you've got this gift that you're well and able and here to be able to do that. So you got to get your stuff together. You got to find that happy medium. A script, you got to start with a script, but know that it's in the end, it's not fixed. You got to be authentic. You got to be prepared and you got to know those prime components, the A, B, and C, to all of your scripts and all of your delivery. That's just gonna make you a better teacher and a better mentor. And that's what I want for you. So if you need some more help with that, lisapizik.com at the bottom of every page, it says schedule a 15 minute free discovery call. I would love to get on, walk you through these ABCs and help you create some good stuff online because I feel like my purpose in life is to help you bring about your purpose. And Eric and I decided, my hubby and I, that in 2019, our motto is help people, help people, help people. And that's what it's all about, that ripple effect. So I'd love to be able to help you get your voice out there in a way that showcases you 
and your personality and who you are because I think that authenticity piece and that integrity piece and that leadership piece is what the world really needs now. So 15 minute discovery call at the bottom of www.lisapizik.com. I'll see you over there and I'll see you next time on the Lisa Pizik show.